Hello, today is Friday, April 8th, 2022. I'm Joe Schmidt from TC2, and this is Staying Connected. Last week, my fellow TC2 directors, Julie Gardner and Teresa Knudsen, recorded a podcast with me that covered payment terms with your ICT suppliers, and we talked about how to best leverage those negotiated terms. At the end of that podcast, Julie mentioned how identifying credits on supplier invoices would probably make a good podcast. She was right. And here we are to talk about how you can tap this untapped gold mine on your invoices. Teresa, Julie, welcome back to Staying Connected. Thanks, Joe. It's great to be back. Yep. Thanks for having us. Okay, Julie, you got me and others very interested when you mentioned this idea on the last podcast. How about if you give us a quick overview of this opportunity to tap the untapped gold mine of credit sitting on company invoices? Sure. As we all know, there's all kinds of things that can happen in your ICT environment that may result in credits being applied to your accounts. Examples might be simple everyday activities like disconnecting a circuit or credits due from billing errors, or perhaps on a larger scale, you have large one-time annual or semi-annual credits that you get based on your contractual provisions. Generally, the suppliers are going to post the credits to the account for which the issue relates, or in the case of your larger semi-annual or annual credits, the accounts that you direct them to post to. That seems simple enough, right? But where they post them and how they post them is really key. That does sound simple. So what situations arise to make this an issue? Well, it's really simple if the supplier posts the credit to the services and it reduces current charges or what we call above the line. So this makes it very simple. And it's also simple if that account has enough monthly charges to absorb or use up that credit in a relatively short period of time, say one to two months. But issues arise when credits are applied to accounts for which there are little or actually no current service charges in them to use up those credits. And in those cases, the credits often sit on these accounts waiting for someone to do something. And generally, they will sit there until the account is completely disconnected, and then you may or may not get a refund check. But you have to direct the suppliers on what to do with these credits that are sitting on accounts with little or no usage charges. Yeah. And just as an example of that, say you get a credit for $100,000 on an account that only bills $5,000 a month. It would take you 20 months to absorb that credit. Again, absorbing it means the credit's used to offset those current charges. So if you don't pay that invoice, it's going to take you 20 months to use up that $100,000. That is way too long for you to see the financial benefit of that $100,000 credit. So that's an issue. Then there's also the issue of the credits being processed below the line, meaning they do not reduce your current charges. These are especially problematic because your TEM suppliers and your AP teams are not reconciling total open balances every month. Credits posted below the line or to the statement of account are going to sit there until you direct the supplier to apply the credits to open invoice balances. Okay, so what do you two recommend? Well, I recommend if you have a situation where a credit is issued on an account and it will take way too long to use up that credit or absorb it through current charges, that you can have the supplier move that credit to a different account or accounts if the credit is really big. So you want to move those credits to uh, accounts that have larger charges. And if you don't have another account with this supplier, you can ask for a refund check to be issued. But keep in mind, there are some limitations on how these credit transfers work. For example, you typically can't transfer an ILEC credit to an inner exchange account, or oftentimes the suppliers won't let you transfer credits between U.S. and non-U.S. build accounts and vice versa. So even if you have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars, like some of our clients do in credits, the carriers will actually resist and kick and scream before they send you a refund check. Yeah, they absolutely will kick and scream. And in addition to the kicking and screaming for your check, they're also going to tell you that your AR must be current before we can do any kind of credit transfers or in some cases even post a credit balance for you. So both Teresa and I worked as CPAs in the big four. So from a financial perspective, it's really important that you realize open credits are often not accrued at month end, particularly when these things post below the line. We talked about above the line credits and below the line credits. When they post below the line, they have not reduced your current charges. Therefore, they're likely not being included in your financial accruals at month end. If you don't move these credits to other larger accounts or request a refund, as Teresa said, they're just going to sit there meaning you're not going to see the financial benefit in your general ledger expenses. 
So you both do quite a lot of work in auditing these types of invoices in the telecom space. So there must be a reason that you wanted to discuss this topic. (laughs) Yeah, this situation happens every day. And if you don't know what to look for, it can go unresolved for a really long time and it can accumulate into really large numbers. Okay, Julie, what are some of the tips and tricks that you use to identify these situations? Well, you can and should attack this problem from a couple different angles. If you use an external TIM provider, you should ask them to run a report from their platform that lists out all of your accounts by supplier and shows both the current charges and the total due on the account. And from there, you want to look for any accounts that have a credit balance and that total due column. Compare the credit balance to your monthly current charges, and then you can calculate that absorption, how many months it's going to take for you to fully absorb that open credit. Now, you can also and should also request an open aging report from your supplier so that you can see what they say is due. You'll want to make sure that they run that to show both current charges by month and the total due on each account, including any unapplied credits. And the third option for you is to run the report yourself from your vendor portals. And to keep in mind, when you're running reporting from the vendor portals or from your TIM supplier systems, you're not always going to see the total due. You might see current charges, but not all builders are going to show you the total due inclusive of current charges and open credits. That's just an important thing to keep in mind. You may not see it across all of the accounts. That's where you really need to get that supplier provided aging report, including open credits. Hey, you just mentioned external TEM provider a couple of times. So do those TEM suppliers, do they typically catch these situations? Here's my newly coined ever popular answer to that. Yes, maybe, and no. So yes, and or maybe they can report them. And yes, or maybe they'll raise them as opportunities for you to address. Again, the supplier accounts have to actually show the total due for them to capture that information and be able to report it to you. The TEM provider is going to rely on you to work with your supplier representatives to move those credits around in order to use them up faster or to request those refund checks. You definitely need to have this as a regular topic at your monthly business reviews with your TEM providers. And the no to my response is that TEMs typically pay current charges only. So they are not going to be on the lookout for credits sitting on accounts, especially those that post below the line. So they'll continue to pay the current charges due on an account, even if there are available credits to be used. We see this happen often. And again, this is where your involvement in the process is key because you're going to need to direct the TEM on how to apply those unused credits to certain accounts. And you're going to need to work with your suppliers to do that. It's amazing stuff. So, Teresa, do you have any closing thoughts? Yeah. Make sure that you're asking for and receiving reporting from your TEM supplier or your AP team internally and look at, as Julie mentioned, not only the current charges, but the total due on accounts. Cross-check those reports against your supplier aging reports and make sure you use open credit so you get the financial benefit in your telecom expense line item. Okay. Thank you, Teresa. And thank you as well, Julie. As you just heard, you could have unused credits on your supplier accounts. And if you're not sure how to turn them into usable credits, get a hold of Teresa or Julie because they can certainly help. You can also contact me or any of our LB3 and TC2 colleagues if you have other ICT needs. Finally, if you would like to stay current, you can subscribe to these Staying Connected podcasts. You can check out our websites and you can follow us on LinkedIn.